I think we should be all right now. Good evening, everyone. Good evening and welcome. Senator the Honorable Nolan Cox, a Minister for Culture, uh, Youth, the Performing Arts, the Charles family and members of Moss International, or special honorees here tonight. Permanent Secretary for ICT, Mr. Finley Jeffrey. Chief Cultural Officer, Mr. Tommy Matthew, and the Acting Chief, Ms. Susan Jones. GCF, the Grenada Cultural Foundation CEO, Ms. Sherma Wells. The new Spice Mass CEO, Mr. Calvin Jacobs. Cultural icons, Elwin McQuilkin, Randy Isaac, Ricardo Keynes Douglas, Peter Addix, specially invited guests, lovers of the art form, media, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Welcome to Venus, we haven't been here before. And we welcome you to Moss International's Jab Malasi Rule. And you might ask, why are we here this evening? And just in case you've never heard about Moss International, I'll just tell you a little bit. Did you know that Moss International, M-O-S-S, -S, doesn't stand for Moss on a Stone? It's Masters of Sweet Sounds. Moss International was formed in 1974 and was a dominant force in Grenada's musical landscape until its final performance in 1997. Moss brought a strong commitment to the development of a unique Grenadian sound to their music. And it was evident in everything that they did, from the formation of the Super Tent for the 1978 carnival season, with an explicit commitment to raise the level of Grenada's Calypso music, to the highly successful Calypso Castle. Who remember that? Good, of the 1980s. To the experimentation with Zouk music. La Voix, who remembers that one? Latin music and other traditional rhythms, which eventually resulted in the monster hit and road march, Jambalasi Rule, in 1991. And which gave birth, and listen carefully, because I'm going to read this slowly. And which gave birth to the jab, jab musical genre for which Grenada is now recognized. It was Moss International. Moss did not restrict itself to performing in Grenada and was also active on the regional and international circuits. The band performed in Carabana in Toronto, Canada for five consecutive years, in Labor Day in New York for four consecutive years, as well as Montreal, Washington, D.C., and Boston in the United States. In the Caribbean, they performed at Trinidad Carnival, of course, at the Martinique Jazz Festival, at music festivals in Barbados on more than one occasion, and at Vinci Mass in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and was Grenada's sole representative at Carif the Five in Trinidad in 1992. Moss also recorded a significant body and catalog of original work, focusing on carnival, Christmas, and general party music, and consisting of six albums, including a Christmas album, eight standalone singles, 14 music videos, and numerous live recordings. Throughout its lifetime, Moss, lifetime, it continues. Moss remains popular on the dance and party circuit, and they performed live on the road at every carnival. And Moss is the reason why we went to Grenville for Rainbow City. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the masters of sweet sound, we're here to celebrate Jab Balasiru. We now invite Mr. Ian Charles to make some remarks. Good night, everyone. Um, Good. Good night, everyone, again. 
I want to say thanks for coming out because, I mean, the truth is, uh, Dexter and I came together to document. Dexter and I came together to document um, something that is indigenous to Grenada, the job music. And I have in a very unique position because these are my uncles, and Dexter is in the promotion and cultural and, and archiving of everything. It was a very easy decision. But um, at the end of the day, seeing that we're celebrating 45 years of independence, and I think it's 29 or 28 years of Jambalasi rule, I think it was the perfect time seeing that job music right now internationally as a sub-genre. Well, some people call it a sub-genre, right? say a full genre. Um, it's kicking fire. I mean, Trinidad, States, Europe, Caribbean, Africa, worldwide, the job music has connected. And it's from Grenada, so that was the main, the main reason we really wanted to document it and make it Grenadian. So I'm very happy that everybody came out. Hope you guys really enjoyed, and thanks again. Thank you very much, Ian. Of course, this event has been put together by uh, the event manager and creative force behind the Job Malassi rule. Uh, please welcome Mr. Dexter Mitchell. Thank you very much, Brenda. Special good evening to Senator Cox, Minister Responsible for Culture, Sports, and Youth Development. The CEO of the Cultural Foundation, Ms. Shama Wells. CEO of the Spice Mask Corporation, Mr. Kelvin Jacob. Chief Cultural Officer, Mr. Thomas Matthew, the Charles family, and you have to excuse me, I cannot help myself, but I'm personally going to introduce the singing MC. We have not seen him in a long, long time. He's here with us tonight. In two days, we celebrate 45 years of independence, and in just over a month, the Grenada Revolution of 1979 will be 40 years old. There will be pageantry, fanfare, and in some instances, periods of reflection over these two historic occasions. This evening, however, we celebrate another historic event. We celebrate music that was given to the world via Labby, otherwise known as Grenville. Among all the things Grenada is known for, our spices, our beaches, the revolution, etc., it is the music, music that originated from Labby that is now, at this stage in our existence, providing us with the most notoriety, making us a destination of choice, making our carnival the envy of the region. The documentary being been screened this evening is our attempt at providing some insight into the process that gave birth to the Grenada song. The documentary examines how a group of devoted and talented musicians and singers challenged themselves to provide the world with something innovative and authentically Grenadian. An argument can be made that Jab Jab as a traditional mass is as popular as it is today because it has its own soundtrack, Jab Music. While some other traditional forms of mass are almost extinct, Jab Jab, propelled by a steady stream of hit tunes, is now as identifiable with Grenada as the nutmeg. This evening, we get to celebrate and honor the pioneers. We get to recognize the unquantifiable contribution to Grenada's musical, cultural, and economic land space. We get to appreciate the innocence of the brilliance that prevailed in 1991. It is our hope that we would have accurately chronicled what is quite possibly Grenada's most significant recording. And it is our hope also that this story of Jambalasi and the origins of Jab music will serve as a catalyst for further pro projects of documentation related to Grenada's unique expressions of culture. I cannot end without thanking the Charles family and the members of Moss International for allowing this project to become a reality. Thanks to Eon and Angel Macmillan, our cameraman sorry, and editor who is off island on another assignment. To the persons who agreed to be interviewed for this documentary, a heartfelt thank you. And a very extraordinary mention must be made of Mr. Benjamin of Gentle Ben Television, who allowed us full access to his extensive archives of footage from yesteryear. 
This project was driven by respect for and an appreciation of the creators among us. Those who selflessly use their God-given talents to give Grenada a distinct cultural and musical identity. As Grenada's music continues to find favor among carnival and soca lovers worldwide, let us never forget the contributions of Moss International and the historic significance of Jambalasi. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dexter. Ladies and gentlemen, the reason why you're here this evening, we invite you to the screening of the Jabalasi documentary. Commonly referred to as the breadbasket of Grenada because of the proliferation of agricultural produce, the parish of St. Andrew is a basket of sorts for Grenadian culture. Within that basket, one would find cultural expressions that run the full gamut. From Calypso Castle to former Calypso monarchs such as African Teller, Timpo and Darius, to dance groups such as the Birch Grove Lancers, and mass bands such as the Rainbow City Mass Players and including music bands, the Rhythm Riders, Rhythm Mix and Moss International. Now, the dynamism of culture in the nation's largest parish led to the extremely successful Rainbow City Festival, a festival that in some years rivaled the national carnival celebrations in its prominence, organization, and delivery. From the tone man I gather, that is behave bad, and party hawking about the place. It's session after session, get ready to go. Swing in full pace, I say full pace. It was the confluence of these cultural expressions that served as the inspiration for a new musical song. A song that originated from within the walls of a recording studio located in Grand Brass St. Andrew. A song that was referred to as Labby Music. The drums and conch shell, the abstract spelling and social and political topics of the Jab Jab bands of St. Andrew held something beyond just a traditional form of expression. Was it possible that the Labe song could come from the fantastic chaos that was Juve? The year 2016 marks the 25th anniversary of Jambalasi rule by Moss International. Let us now meet some of the members of the band. Okay, I'm Leon. I was the bass player in Moss and also was the manager of the band in terms of bookings and uh, that kind of thing and also managed the on-stage programming and performance of the band. Okay, I'm Ricky. Um, started off as percussionist, took a, br a brief stint as guitar player and then landed on the drums and remained the drummer for the band almost the entire period thereafter. Right, my name is Garnet William. Due to my relationship with um, Don and Leon from the Catholic Youth Movement, um, and then following up, being lining around the studio for a number of years as a young guy, then I got myself involved in the band itself as a song engineer. My name is Agnes Forrester, and I was the lead female vocalist in Moss International.
The vocal identity of Moss International was undoubtedly the man affectionately known as the singing MC. Music was in the thing, eh? From since a little. In fact, my father used to be a musician. Yeah. He he wasn't in, he used to be in a band which name I don't know. Okay. He used to be a drummer. And he claimed to be the first person to go in the market and beat little they used to have this SO oil pan. Okay. My father's name was Leonard, yeah? So he used to beat a, a little steel band thing like, you know. I should say that I won road match in Grenville when I was about eleven years old. Eleven or twelve years old. Um, singer had this thing. I think it's singer. There's a fella called Mikey, somebody from Ladi. He was in the Lions Club and they had this Chidi's Carnival. I remember I sang this song, Steam Dong, Breadfoot and Maniku. People do remember Alfonso making Ligaru. You know? <laughs> and I got $10 for my prize. You know? <laughs> that was my, my, my prize for winning the, winning the, um, the junior monarch. This kind of a thing, and probably for getting rude match because Steve and everybody played that. Steve Long, but Futan. So I guess from, from young, that was something that was, you know, with me. Moss International was born out of a unique set of circumstances, musical relationships, and the popular band movement taking place in St. Andrew during the early 1970s. Moss started in 1974, and it was the outgrowth of couple of other bands which Don was involved in. Um, originally he started playing with Rhythm Riders back in 72, 73 and then he was part of Generation Revival into late 73, early 74. Generation Revival ended around the time when we had the strike in 1974 and Don and a couple of his other friends then got together in a group, an informal group called SOBs and they used to play, be playing in stage concerts and so on and SOBs around the middle of 1974 grew into Moss, at that time it was just Moss, Masters of Sweet Songs. Over, over the years the name grew to be Moss Interna International. Um, when the band started uh, there was, John was the leader of the band obviously and keyboard player. Um, I came in as the guitar player and then some of the other SOB members were playing bass, um, drums and so on. And as Ricky said, he was playing the congas. Um, after about six months we had a major shake up in the membership of the band because a new band called Black Experience, was it Ricky? No, I don't remember the name. Uh, Which, Black Experience was from Tongue. Which yeah. Keith went to. Yeah. Anyway, that major shake up and we lost the jump we lost the bass player. And then we a couple of months after lost the drummer. So when we lost the bass player, we could not find a suitable replacement for the bass. So I was also trained on the bass. So I was switched from guitar to bass and we brought in a guitar player. And then a couple of months and uh, Ricky deputized as guitar player for a couple of months and then we got a full time guitar player. And then the drummer left and Ricky changed to, to drums around the middle of 1975. Mm. Um, I think the first performance was May 1st in Dunfermline. Yeah. <laughs> you can remember that. <laughs> <laughs> we also, in 1985, brought in singing MC. Um, he was the MC in the tent, but he also liked to sing. And we actually started doing a song, I Like the Walkers MC, as part of his, his comedian act. As, a, as, a, as, a, as, as as the MC, but the song actually brought him to the finals. <laughs> so, in '86, I had the song "Labi Carnival Heart." That time, um, the 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 thing was kind of coming on stream. They had this um, Rainbow City exhibition, what have you. So, um, I made this song just for the performance to boost boost the the um, the show, you know. And strangely. It took off. If you listen to Labia Carnival, it's fun. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Ooh, 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 because we we happy. That you know, because we have vibes, the studio. No, this studio, more studio wasn't ordinary thing, you know. 
you might find the thing there now, but it was a place where we meet with our family. It wasn't just you, a group of musicians come. It was like a family. Jambalasi rule was not an accident. As the story unfolds, we will hear how Moss International deliberately converted juvie morning commerce into commercial music success. What we normally do in the studio, like when we meet on evenings to practice, we always have this, we see melee chat for us among band members, you know, talking about these activities, what we're hearing, what's going on and so on. And um, at that point in time, myself and singing MC was employed with the same organization. So we were looking at all organizations um, in terms of um, like productivity among workers and so on. Because they, 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 you know, the whole idea came up about you know, workers working hard and some people being compensated and some people not compensated. So from that discussion, we started um, saying, you know, well, you work, you don't work the same damn thing because, you know, you contribute and you're not contributing. So we, we, we came up with the idea of, you know, well, let's do a song. So I uh, asked MC, what song are you talking about? I, I'm not a vocalist. So Don sit down and back there and he, Don always had great ideas. Don start up and he start framing his mind some, some sort of song. And then he say, what y'all think about coming up with a jab jab song? Hey, it wasn't the full band, it was a few of us and we say, Don wrong with you, you mad? Moss doing jab jab song, that doesn't song as Moss. And the idea just start flowing. And Leon came up with the thing, well look man, they have a lot of things going on politically. So why we don't try to incorporate what's going on politically into the song and try something. We are saying Jab Jab song, we're not checking on the serious Jab Jab Jambalasi music. And then the, by chatting and going, then MC say, well, look, if you want to do a Jab Jab song, you must have a conch shell. And that's where the conch shell attitude came in. And that's where the whole Jab Jab idea of Jambarasi will develop. Jambarasi originated from an idea MC came up with. And the idea was that we used to do political commentary. And he came on in the room and said, you know, I have an idea. This political situation, remember we had an election in 1990. And in 1991, MC's view was, look, nothing has changed. So the whole idea started with the concept of the same damn thing. He said, look, man, the politician is the same damn thing. And he said, you know something? Let's do it. That, that's a job free. So let's use the job concept, a job job concept, and do a song about the same damn thing. So that is where the concept started, that we should do a song from a job, with, a job, with a, the job as the base. He didn't come and say, let's use a job job rhythm. But because our whole approach was that we were, as Ricky was saying, ensure the rhythm reflected what the song was doing. If you're doing a song with Java as a bass, then it meant that you should really move into the Java Java rhythm. Right? So it, that, 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 that is the logic of what we got to the Java Java rhythm. When the, we wrote this song in the studio, we started to write the song, and there was a, a split in the band. You had two persons who were very vocal, and then going back to Jab Jab, and this putting down the band with degrading the band and thing thing. And Don and Leon got kind of confused. Should we go? Should we not go? You know? Because the men were vocal. They, I mean, they come out and, and they were seemingly men who were supposed to have head. Right? They, who was in, the, in high positions before and who was, you know, even teacher and thing. And they think, no, 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 Jab Jab. You bring down the band to Jab Jab. And you know this kind of thing. And, I thought about it, you know. But then Troy Gavi came in a little time afterwards and we were talking about the same idea. And Troy, Troy said, man, MC, man, you know, singing a song, sing about the situation because that's that, that your thing. Sing about, um, you don't have no good commentary. And Don wink an eye for me. <laughs> Don make a little sweet eye and I tell Don, you know, thumbs up. I was quite privileged and fortunate to always hear Moss music long before. We will sit and discuss the ideas and uh, the intentions 
and sometimes be a part of the mixing process. But again, it came back to Don, his feelings, and uh, Ricky and Leon and other guys coming together to merge. It was a, a complete team effort always. I think was Don was also a key supporter of MC's research effort. And I mean, I always remember conversations with them, how is it going, who you talk to, who you should talk to. You know, we got to really understand this thing. We got to get to the fellas who really know about this thing. So there was, there was this ongoing discussion between, I mean, Don was a key driver or supporter of MC in the whole research part of, of, of trying to capture the, the whole jab jab culture and, and, and rhythm. I asked Garnet, I said, Garnet, boy, you know, no old, some old jab jab song, don't think, no? So while they're fighting to figure out what and what and what and what, uh, putting lines in place. You know, but the only thing we came up with, or I came because I didn't like what Ghani came up with, was him. Um, don't pass in me yard. If you realize that's the jab jab thing, but the rest is not so much the jab jab thing, except the spelling. So I put things in place and I started to write the song. I got some spelling, they lead me to some old people who used to play jab jab before. Um, Wilby, he was a butcher man from St. James. And I don't feel called Bob Rasta Bob. Rasta Bob died. I think. But I went and got some spelling from Wilby. And what was nice about it, Willby gave me the spelling in Patois. So I thought I had it set. So I write down the, I take the part what I get, and I put it in the little song for the spelling. Not knowing this bad word, <laughs> indecency, bad, bad, bad word. <laughs> the song was a very conscious and deliberate attempt to promote Jab Jab as a culture, as a, as a staple of Grenadian culture. And I'm thinking with credit to MC, I, had, I mean, yes, the final idea came when we had the emergency. But if I remember well, MC had been re researching this thing for well over a year. Right? MC talked about that a year before we came to, and, and the, the, the piece that he had to do a lot of research on was the Jab Jab spelling, which unfortunately the, mod the modern current um, Jab songs have seemed to have lost total touch with. But if you notice, an uh, important part of Jam was what was called the Jab spelling which is like a, a real big part of the culture. And MC did credit to him, did a lot of research ahead of, ahead of the season, talking to fellas, some old traditional job. I remember there's a particular guy from St. James. I always remember him when he was a postman. <laughs> he's a guy that played job every year. He was one guy that MC went to, to try and help him to understand how you go about coming up with this job, job spelling thing. You know, and I mean, if you listen to Jab last year, there's quite a bit of the Jab Jab, what is called Jab Jab spelling. Well, Jab, well, Jab, Jab, my turn to spell pumpkin skin. Yeah, pumpkin skin. A pong, a pong. Pong, not skin myself. Alright. I pong, I pong, I pong, I pong, I pong, I pong. Make a kiss, make a kiss, make a kiss. 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 I will tell for you. That was a very, very good one. I was looking for a while ago. I see you, mother. I see, I see you, mother. In front of the police station. In front of the police station. And Juve, mother. And Juve, mother. That stands for confirmation. That stands for confirmation. Who better than us? Yeah. All right. Well, if I write a, a voice in a song, the song don't complete. You know? So the thing is, that is why this thing get down to roots. Remember with tradition, because that is our thing. Now, we there is, with all due respect to Grenadian people, we is lab here, but say what? <laughs> you know? Yeah, remember? We, so the, the thing coming around now in a job that, you know, in the job that, they, remember? You know, for this Kambule, Jambalasi. So for this time now, it's job job that ruling. In this time, you know? And what it is. So that was the song start. Yes, we everywhere, taking it from the grapevine. You know? Yeah, we're making all with Kong, Pekong, and so if the campaign didn't pass with me, and there's the part that, that, that thing, you know? So the campaign didn't pass in me yard, they wouldn't have say hold me more but okay, don't pass in me yard. And then I will speak out. I have one line from Hamlet, Hamlet Mark. I remember I um, walked in one night and they were walking on this thing and you know this Don was experimenting with this with this um, beat and then Leon and MC and so on they were experimenting the lyrics and so on. And the, the thing just developed in a very generic way in the studio and, and everybody added their ideas and the piece, you know. You know, even in me, I did my own ideas and piece, you know, when you talk about um, the breath, the breath, you know, how you can I insert the dance? Why well, that's song good, let's put that in. So that's how the, 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 the thing came about. Key to the success of Jambalasi is the rhythm, which came from transferring the intricate patterns played on the goatskin drums to the acoustic drums. That Jambalasi rhythm started, 
Amber Leon come at me Leon come at me for um, for uh, a cassette that I had that I got from Fitzroy B. Dodi, then Commissioner of Police. Uh, or it, it was probably before he became Commissioner and he had given this this zoop tape and they came and I, and I, I, I gave them the the tape to listen to to get an idea of the sort of vibes in the zook music and it evidently they they molded that jambasi song i guess along with you know from that tape ricky was looking for a a, a drum beat i said no we want jab jab drum beat but remember we had a while in none have a drumming for itself jab jab had a drumming for itself but the jab the, the one that was more rolling this kind of thing. But Jab Jab had an introduction. <laughs> you know? That was the Jab Jab thing. So <laughs> I said, no, we had to get this thing. And they So Ricky walked out the pattern. Because he was the drummer. I could only give him the idea. So credit to Ricky to put the idea. You know, he bring it out, you know? Um, but I thought, between me, that that part would have been on the congas. So I thought that the congas and the drum would have make up the thing. But Ricky had... Better ideas. The, the challenge was how, how do we, I mean, the, the, the Jab Jab rhythm is basically played off the goat skin drum, right? And, and the challenge was how do you capture that on a standard acoustic drum set with a snare and a bass drum and a hi-hat and, and how do you still get the same rhythmic influences and, and keep that true to the culture? Um, so I understood the, the rhythm, I knew the structure of the rhythm, I, I knew the the, 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 the drums that made up the rhythm, and basically the jab jab rhythm is, is three drums, right? You have one drum, the bass drum, just going, right? And then you have a second drum, just playing that, and then the third drum, right? So the combination of those three, that's the jab jab rhythm. Three drummers is what it takes in the typical goat skin, goat skin environment to play the jab jab rhythm. So how did I, as one drummer, <laughs> play those three drums and capture the rhythm. And that was the challenge. So I, I always remember, so I, I programmed it on, 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 on the drum, the drum machine, and I captured all the three drums. But when I did that, there was really no room for music. The whole rhythm was filled. So Don was like, this, no, 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 the, 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 this thing too jumbled up. We, we had to create some gaps for the guitar. We had to create room for the keyboard to play and the bass to play. And it therefore took me to, to be able to figure out, to come to a different understanding of the rhythm, to decide what I could leave off of the drums to keep the pattern and, and allow room for the bass. So the bass then started to capture, I mean, the, 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 the standard drum was, the, the bass and the, and the foot drum would say, but the, this piece was important. But then I had, to, I had to leave room in that third piece so that the keyboard could play some of that, so that the guitar could play some of that. And it took us a couple of nights well enough to fill it out. Like I remember we got to a point and it was like, no, nah, this thing song into jumble up. This thing song into noisy. We, we were well down the road. There was instrumentation, there was melody, there was bass. But the whole rhythm was song and so confused because I was, I was still trying to play everything that the drum would play. And one night after rehearsal, we decided, let's give this thing another try. And we got it. Two new innovations, the conch shell and the music video. Andy. Told me because as I said, Moss was a family. So Andy told me, I said, I want, uh, I want a shell. So don't tell me, and anytime you have an idea, don't for it, eh? Don't say, go for the shell. So I went down by cock, and cock lent me the shell. So we came up, I came up with the shell, and I blew, you know? And according to Don, boy, that is, he's the first man I put in conjunction in, in, in music, you know? Don't tell me, but we laugh at the idea. You understand? Not knowing what happened to Jambalasi. There's a, a live shell that was there. And that shell tore with us, that shell going to the States, you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's the only shell I got on a visa. <laughs> the conch shell was a pulling part of the um, Jambalasi. Beside the Jab Jab music, the conch shell. Because the next year, WCK used conch shell in their tune. Yeah. We had the spelling, we had the rhythm, the drums, and we had the shell. It was, the whole, Jambalasi rule was a deliberate jam, Jab Jab product. So we brought in all the elements of Jab Jab into it. We started off with the same damn thing, because that is what the Jabs used to be saying. That's where it came from, same damn thing. 
And then we added the shell, we had the spelling, we had the rhythm. It was a delivery product, so, that, so that's why it's there. This is one of the fastest songs Mass International ever produced. Because within about four days, we had Jambala Seoul <laughs> recorded. I myself was given my task to um, do the video. I don't know if you all ever see the video. You have posy on my head, two rings on my nose, rub down with charcoal. You know, I have to go to work in the morning. Eh? About three o'clock, come with Mark and them have me running up and down the, the road <laughs> doing, <laughs> doing this video. Late one um, morning, because we were finishing practicing, and um, they all dressed up in, dabbed themselves with the black MC and garnet, and, so, and right uh, in the road going down to the studio, that's where they filmed this thing. I feel it all. I never take time in my life. But uh, we took coals dust, I pick up some coals dust, and we coals dust myself, take a book, and some jab jab before, we used to have this polished pan glasses, and they used to have this long pan fingernail, when they clang, 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 clang. And the mouth was so chill, so that way chill, so free jab. Jab jab, no sweet jab jab, no sweet mass, no jab jab. And they have this big cough mass up and a chain. So when you hear jab jab, and they poof, and the children hear the shell, they know it's so, everybody taking cover on the bed. Because when they think so, and they spell for you, white teeth with the red thing, the mouth and black thing, nobody's staying wrong. We couldn't get the polish pan thing. We only put the, I think it was rose pink, my mother had. So I put some rose pink, and then I put some rose pink, put little shots, and early morning done, we did the video. In fact, the song was finished mixing at midnight, and the video was done um, at the open, say, 4 in the morning. About, as the sun was rising, we were going to church about 6 in the morning, the video was shot right outside the studio, and then we were on the airport for what time? <laughs> Literally, from shooting the video. We go straight yeah. to the airport. We left the video with Hamlet, Mark, to finish it. We never saw the final version of the video until we came back. It was actually the first official music video that was done in Grenada. Um, I mean, before that, people, you know, record people's miming and that kind of thing, but a produced music video, that was the first time it was done. The hit tune that almost wasn't. For the lack of a few Canadian cents, the history of Grenada's music could have been very, very different. We never rehearsed the song as a man. The song was recorded, sent off, and then we left for Canada. But the whole band never played the song together before we left. When we got to Canada, we actually cancelled the record. Because I remember saying we left around 20 something. And therefore, there were two weekends one weekend, and then the second weekend was Rainbow Weekend. So we wanted the record out the weekend before Rainbow Weekend. So it should have gone up to Canada if it's a Tuesday or Wednesday. I mean, took about those days. and came back the Friday. When we called the Grenada and the about well, the Friday to see if the record was being sent home, they said no, they cannot do it because they was tied up with crop over music. And they could not produce our record until the following week. Which would have meant that it would have gotten to Grenada Rainbow Weekend. And we felt that Rainbow Weekend was too late to release any song for Carnival. Because when you go into Rainbow, it's the popular song that play. And, and whatever doesn't, whatever survives Rainbow is all goes into Carnival. But you can't release a new song, Rainbow Weekend. So we then decided, look, it didn't make any sense releasing the song, spending the money to press the record and so on. So we said, you're going to cancel Chamberlainsey. But we were living at Humber College. Yeah, Humber College campus. Campus. And those days they didn't have cell phone and those kind of stuff. So all they had was pay phones. And we could only call back Barbados using coins. But we had just gotten to Canada, so we didn't have many coins. <laughs> so I think we had coins about five, two or three minutes stuck. Yes. So we called the guy in Barbados and said, look, we called him to cancel the record. He responded, I said, no, you can't cancel the record. You've already spent so much money in producing the record and so on. It doesn't make sense. You should finish. We said, no, it's too late. We can't release the record. And then, bling. Money finished. <laughs> so we thought he had gotten the message to cancel the record. We didn't have money to call back and then we had to perform with left and go. We had no record for carnival and coins. that's it. That's so much you didn't have the coins. We didn't have the coins. <laughs> yeah, we had cash, but we didn't have the coins to put in the payphone. <laughs> Next thing we heard from Grenada the Friday night that the records came in. <laughs> the Friday before before Rainbow. That the records came in. What to do? 
So we said, okay, let it go. And the Friday night, or the Saturday, they told us that the record's coming down. So good old Mary, faithful to the band, you know, went and collected the thing on the airport. And she gave strategic DJs, look, what and what and what, you know? That was the Friday. Saturday night, somebody called me in Canada. Called me. I think it was DJ Arta to say, boy, I want a copy of that. So I said, a copy of what? Because I don't remember thing. A copy of what? He said, um, um, run fast, your mother come in. So, <laughs> so I think, why is run fast, your mother come in? Because this thing out of me, you know? And I remember, I said, boy, I look at that. He said, yes. He said, boy, he tell me, say, I have to put on a, a, a how do you call it, in Trinidad Soka, a version for the people to sing that in Guav. Because, you know, I was a DJ. I think I see her. So then my mind starts running back now. To, I have to try to remember the song. By Saturday midday, the phones are ringing from Grenada saying, look, this thing I played five times on the radio for the morning already. <laughs> people are going for it. By Saturday night, we were, that's all that's playing in, in, in Rainbow City. So we were on tour. We were up in Montreal. And then the news came, hey, man. Jambalasi rule, mashing up Rainbow City. So you say, what, that time the band don't know how to play Jambalasi rule full yet. You know? So when I came down, I dropped, the bus dropped me here. And I just put my bags inside. And I said, let me go do it and see what they do. That was after 11 the night. And from, I dropped by the cinema. And from the cinema, I went right around the town. All I had took, tick, took, tick, took, tick. Everybody in the rain took, tick, took. And I decided I in trouble. I, then I realized I in trouble. And that was Jambalasi. At that point in time, Kalalu was dominating. Jambalasi rule just came and he swept the whole crowd. Now we used to come back to perform in Rainbow City. We used to do Canada the Saturday on the road. Sometimes we do the island the Sunday. But that year we came back the Sunday because we had to perform in Rainbow the Monday night. So all of a sudden we had a hit on our hands the Monday night to perform, which the band had never rehearsed. And we said we didn't have the time to rehearse it. So when we landed on the airport the Monday night coming from Canada, everybody telling us, whoa, your song is so big, we like the song, that, 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 we're coming to hear it tomorrow night. Oh, we don't know the song. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the band, I, I, never, I never played, played the song. Like, you never played the song the drum machine. The programming was on the drum machine. machine. So we never played the song. <laughs> and we're going to perform in Rainbow City that Monday night. Everybody coming to hear Jack Malassi rule and the band doesn't know the song. <laughs> So what we did is we were doing the song check. We ran the basic bands, make sure everybody understood the basic bands. And I think we did a voice on the chorus tonight. Yeah. We did a voice on the chorus and we just get on the run fast, your mother come in. Yeah, Which is what everybody was, was queuing it on. And then we learned this song during the week to play on the road Monday and Tuesday. Yeah, but we literally we cancelled the record and we come in to meet a hit which we didn't know and had to perform. I went to St. George's and well the band was going ahead, going along the street. And uh, everybody was just um, leaving the other bands and coming to Moss International. And um, because that year, um, Kalaloo was the, what she say, like the biggest song. But when Moss got into St. George's and the blast, Jab Malassi, people went crazy, you know? They just forgot about, Jab Ma um, about Kalaloo and everybody was singing Jab Malassi, you know? Run fast, your mother come in, <laughs> you know? I think Grenada finally embraced a music experiment. But I think what sold the song was, was of course the beat, but also the lyrics, if I want to say that myself, I think it was well done. And even sometimes I, I listen to the song now and I realize how well done the song you know, was. And Jambalasi broke all the established norms because what you find happening, it was, when you listen to the lyrics and you understand what is being said, was a reflection of its time 
and the issues being spoken about back then politically and socially. And it was able to cross over to be a top party song, to be a song that took the road. So it served two sides of the coin. So it was not just a party song, a jump up song. You need to listen also to the lyrics and understand the context in which it came together. And it was different hook lines, different things in the song that gave a particular message. So it really was something different, unique from what we were accustomed to. And again, it came from that of Moss International and the Calypso Castle and the studios downstairs, downstairs Mr. Charles's house. The impact that they have had, I mean, we can't measure it, but it's, it's significant. I mean, it's, it's created a genre in some ways. Imagine if they never had the idea to take that goat skin drum rhythm and put it in the studio. We'd never know what it was today. Right? It'd still be something that we only listen to maybe in the, you know, the carnival morning or whatever when the, 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 that kind of drum stuff was being played. But the reality is that they've created in something that's actually crossed over the bridge, available commercially, and it's now a genre, right? As a youth now, we knew of the drums live drums on the road where we practicing basically for juvie morning so we have some guys beating the drums and we making up songs on people in the community and you know the conch shell and that that was music now the first time i ever heard it recorded is when i heard that mass international rhythm i'm like what genius because we do it every day we hear it every day every carnival we play it but no one ever took the initiative to, to record. No, that's where I think it started from. I never heard any tune or music before with that full jab jab beat. So hearing that, I think it was like, to me especially, it was like, whoa, because um, I'm, I'm somebody who really in love with the old mass, the traditional mass from the Veco, the Wild Indian, the Shotney, the jab jab, that's me. And when I heard that, it was, whoa. And I mean, I'm a youth, I was a, 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 probably a teenager at the time, but I know I fell in love with it. People will behave in a certain particular way, and you never know something could have drive you to behave. To, you understand, express yourself on a next level, and that's why I see Jambalas. is like, everything used to be night music, okay, yeah, yeah. And then you get some men coming and tell you, um, you're vexed, you don't vex him, damn thing. That's like, yeah, you know what I mean? So I put it like the, the rebel. The rebel and music, that's where the, the whole madness started. And to me, I would say I'm Jambalasi. So Jambalasi is just taking with culture, mm -hmm. Glabe culture, and taking the social issues at the time, political issues, well not social, the political issues at the time, and fusing them together. And what may have happened is that people could identify with these things. The center of the Moss International Universe was Don Charles a gentle genius who was the personification of humility, but whose skills and talent has transformed Grenada's musical landscape. Don has always been a very quiet, behind-the-scenes person. Don will get, if you check, when Moss sets up on the stage, Don always tries to stay the furthest distance behind the keyboards, deliberately stacking the keyboards so high that you wouldn't see him. Don has always been that quiet, kind of person who likes to be in the background, not necessary to the full being, and probably that's just his, his personality, but I think his contribution should be recognized. I think he opened the doors, he created the avenues. The studio might not have been the best as compared to what was available at the time in Barbados and in Trinidad, but he provided an opportunity. He provided a skill level. He got persons involved. He created an avenue for a number of persons. Part of it, in a sense, maybe his fault, because he never really hugged the spotlight. Don is not a guy who wants to come out in the spotlight and, and beat his own chest. Or, I mean, even if you go, to, when we go to on tours or for shows, he will just not go, not really want to go to the interview. He'll be the guy in the background, you know? So he'll send myself or Leon or somebody like that, or, or the little singers and so on. So, so, he's, so unless you're, you're, you're following this thing very closely, you may, you may not even realize who's the real force behind it. So he's that kind of character. Okay. Um, 
And I think Don's, Don's greatness is not, is not just the music. I must deal with the music, but the other people he, he helped in the music. Um, you had to have been around Don to realize Don, if Don got paid for all the stuff he did for a lot of folks, he'd have been a millionaire. Don helped, just helped a lot of guys. A lot of guys would just walk into the studio and Don would just walk with them. I learned a lot from him. We used to do a lot of things together, you know? Um, and I remember he had this chuckle, this laugh. When he had something on you, he would chuckle and laugh. <laughs> Not maliciously, but to say, well, I have this one up on you. Very, very kind guy, very kind guy. And he was not afraid to share his musical knowledge um, with you. Um, and in those days, you know, you had every day a new synthesizers coming out, new keyboards, new um, software in the industry. So, and he was on top of all these things. And he would share that information with you. You know, he was, what I would say, I mean, besides being a good friend, I mean, Donna's, to put it, to put it simply, is a good guy. Don was like my big brother. You now, we developed and even the band for me. You now, we used to kick, they used to kick on me and say, boy, you and Don is um, Flintstones. <laughs> so Don was known as Fred. And I was not a Barney. Unfortunately, Don Fred dropped, but Barney continued because everybody, Barney, Barney, Barney. And that's how close myself and Don was. Don was willing to teach me every living thing possible. And I mean, he loved discipline. I grew up in a disciplined environment, so I was willing to learn. He had a lot of sacrifice. Times when maybe I should be partying, I mean, the studio is done. And when Don was in that studio, I tell you, we drink coffee at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. Don was willing to share all his experience with you. And we developed that close relationship until I was Don's co-pilot when he driving. Because any time he driving and he falling asleep, and he'll go, say, Don, you sleeping, huh? No, nah, man, no, nah, man. <laughs> he had a shortcut that he never told anybody from... St. Andrews to St. George's. I've never seen somebody cover the hills so quickly. Don will call you and tell you on see in five minutes. And bap, he's up and about. When he, when he did something and he felt that it sung so kind of different or sung good, he just looks at you. He, he, he's not a talker. He wouldn't talk much, you know, but he looks at you and, as, you know, okay, that sung good, <laughs> you know. Remember when Randy Isaac came, just came out? Don and Leon, Spoon fed and guided Randy to, to become a proper Calvsonian and many other Calvsonians. They were willing to, Don was willing to just sacrifice. Sometimes I say, Don, I'm tired. He said, Give the guys a chance, man. Come on, Barney. Stay with me. You can't leave me and go. Stay. And I stay there with him and he'll walk. Why not open a carnival institute where we can sit down and learn the truth? Teach the people about mass and costume making, dancing and everything. Then we go have a better carnival eh? in the Oval, yes, just for one and all. And on the street there'll be plenty, plenty more feet parade into the beat. There yeah, are young people we taught to play guitar, the keyboard and so on. The only thing he never taught me to play those instruments because he wanted me to be with him in the song engineering business. But I will tell you, I mean, I know his links with, with, with a Jamu, with a Timpo, you could, you could go back. And I mean, even just before, there were a plan for Mars to do something with Third World. And then one of the guys in Third World, I think died and things didn't really come. But there were plans ahead. And you know, Don was always willing to give his all. He, he wasn't watching money for him, wasn't. Once he could teach, even when he had problems for band members, he said, well, if he could get a few young guys to teach. We brought a few. All the studying about traveling and they can't sing one, can't sing one verse. 
in a song, but uh, I could tell the contribution I done. Maybe uh, I call his name. Uh, that's my icon in music. <laughs> Myself was just a, a song engineer, not trained in any school or any song. Trained by Don Charles. Don was like, you know, the keyboardist. You know, that's most international keyboardist, I mean, you know? So I used to look up to this guy and, you know, you try to aspire to be as good as them. Moss International was an amazing band. Don Charles was an amazing keyboard player, right? When I was, I don't know, old and reading about the Prophet 6 and, and keyboards that I re only read about in, mag in Keyboard Magazine, you know, this dude was playing these synths, right? So in some ways a legend to me, right? Moss International has left a lasting legacy. A legacy that is now in the hands of a new generation of producers and artists. Jab music is now a recognized soca subgenre, a definitive Grenadian brand as the legacy continues. Most of the guys who sing it right now just have a rhythm and a chant, and they're not developing the music. At the end of the day, he make the point. The music, the whole thing was to develop a musical form, and therefore the music is important, the instrumentation, the orchestration, the melodic lines. We have to bring this into it, and unless we bring this into it, it remains a, it will remain a subgenre. One of the advice I would like to to give to the young guys is that they must they must okay they 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 they're very good at the computers, and I think they must add to that some musical skill. I mean, it is very important to have an idea of, you know, how to, how to, how to construct music. A lot of those guys put a rhythm together. Those guys can't play an instrument. So you go and get a, a you know, a beat on a computer and you have a rhythm going. Because I, I, one of the things, of course, in those days, it was a, almost like a live process. A guy came with a guitar and a thing and, and you know, work with a few cards and try to get a feel of how this thing will work with that song. I don't think we have that process going to it. So it's, it's, it's part of because of the technology in a sense, right? I mean, you know, I mean, a lot of the producers now are not, are not musicians. A lot of guys who make rhythm can't play an instrument, you know. If you're going to be a studio producer and produce music for somebody and charge for it, you gotta learn to play an instrument. Or at least you gotta have somebody that comes in that knows how to competently play a guitar. I mean, you gotta have to learn to play a keyboard because most of this stuff goes on through a keyboard you're going to have somebody who's competent at doing it. Like playing one finger at a time and doing a harmony a second finger just isn't useful. So that's the number one thing I would say. If you learn to play, play smooth, you don't have to be the baddest jazz player on the planet. You just gotta learn to hold a few chords and be smooth about it and practiced about it. There was a version I, I heard about two or three years ago. I don't hmm. remember all the, all the different artists' name, eh? But um, Black and Dirty mm -hmm. is the song. Oh, it's a yeah. slow jab jab. And I, I, Sandman. Sandman. Sandman? No prisoners. Right. No prisoners. So that is a to me is an important development in the genre. I think it's for the, the music to go mainstream as a genre, it must be able to function at the different tempos and with different themes. It must be able to have a love a, 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 a lover's and a love song in jab jab, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Against the rhythm. Mm -hmm. And the, the rhythm at that speed for me was a very interesting innovation. It's yeah. one of the better modern innovations yeah, I've heard I, of. I really rhythm. like it, yeah. And I think it's an important step. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. The next video clip, while referring specifically to a 1997 Moss International composition entitled Rampage, is an apt analysis of the relentless and deliberate attempts by the band to create a unique Grenadian sound. Here is the gentle genius himself, Don Charles. Yeah, well, Rampage is the usual, our usual attempt at a fusion. You know, like I said before, we, 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 um, we took the authentic thing off the street and we tried to put the conventional type of music, type of instrumentation, you know, little horns, little bass, you know. It works. <laughs> How long did you all take to do this one? Well, we've been playing with the idea for a little while. Huh? This is something we actually experimented with on the road last year. Juve morning, you know, and um, we figured the vibe was there and, you know, we decided to hold on to it and 
the lyrics kind of thing I can't tell you much about because I, I know lyrics man you know but um, you know them guys play with the lyrics based on things are happening today you know what I mean so that kind of change up a little but 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 basically the vibe you know same kind of after several months of writing recording and editing we have finally concluded Jambalasi the story over the past few months we have been able to chronicle a very important part of Grenada's cultural and musical history. In fact, the attention Grenada is now getting for Jab Jab and Jab Music internationally can be directly credited to the exploits of Moss International and the genius of Don Charles, singing MC, Leon and Ricky Charles and the others. This documentary is dedicated to the memory of Don Charles and Garnet Williams, who together were affectionately known as Fred and Barney. May their souls rest in peace. Let's get down to roots. Remember we tradition. For this Kambule, Jambalasi ruling this time. Yes, we everywhere, taking it from the grapevine. We breaking all rules with fun, pickong and rhyme. If the campaign didn't pass in me yard, they wouldn't have say how me more bad mood. Okay, do pass in me yard. You say you make it better. Eh eh, you make we stain we finger. Now only one year later, this country getting heart failure. Eh. You vote, you don't vote, same damn thing. The hat or the hand, same damn thing. Whatever, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Talk, we 
same damn thing. We walk, we don't walk, same damn thing. We pay, we don't pay, same damn thing. Oh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the masterpiece that almost never happened. Let's hear it again. We would have to believe that it was divine intervention, right? Yes. That coin story. Person in Barbados not hearing the end of it. Yes. There was a third wheel involved. And really and truly, um, if this didn't happen, then the genre as we know it would not have been brought to the world. And on our 45th celebration of our nation's independence, 45 years, this, our music, our music is probably the sweetest thing that we have. Let's hear it for Moss International. Got a little emotional watching it. Huh? Great storytelling, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After your retirement, yeah. Check on Kuriki. <laughs> All right. Um, we'd like to say good night to those that are following on WPG 10. Uh, good night. We, we've been with us from the start. Of course, Hamlet Mark is an extended member of the Moss International family. So all the viewers on WPG 10, Party Grenada, we're streaming live. Nazim and team, good evening. And I'm sure Nazim keeping the comments there um, <coughs> censored. <laughs> All right, so, uh, but ladies and gentlemen, what a treat, right? All right, good. And this is, this is, is historical documentation. I was talking to Ian um, while the video was showing, and Ian was saying, you know, Lava Man got it. I am Jab Malasi. That is strong branding. Senator Cox? I am Jambalasi. Yes. Lava Man, you totally got it. You got it. You got it. Well done. And Ian was saying, you know, that is the recipe. And I have to agree with Ian. That is the recipe. That is the recipe. So, well done. Timeless. Genius. At this time, we'd invite uh, Senator Cox. I'm sure you got quite a history lesson viewing. 
And so we invite you here. We don't invite people like you here just to smile with us, you know. Uh, when you come, <laughs> there is something that you must perform. So we invite you to make some remarks. Senator Nolan Cox. Thank you very much, uh, Brenda. When I looked at the, the program and I see my name wasn't there, I felt so good. I could say I was off the hook tonight, but um, probably when you're sitting in the front here, you, you normally get called out for us in the class. Um, I, I don't know where to start, but just to say this evening is a wonderful experience for me. And one of the things that really I said to myself while I was sitting there, I am privileged to be the minister responsible for culture in grade at this time. And I think that is something that really drives me day after day to ensure that I do as much as I can to ensure that everyone who is involved in culture get the best out of it um, in terms of not just from an economic standpoint, but also from just for the love of it. And I'm really fortunate to be given the opportunity to oversee this, this really um, cultural asset that we have here in Grenada. I want to congratulate Moss on what they have done for us, um, where they have put Grenada. And I was just telling him, coincidentally, um, yesterday, um, myself and the CEO for the Cultural Foundation, we had a long discussion on a, a project that we are embarking on to see how we can secure um, Grenada's cultural assets. And we were speaking about two particular products, which is the Shakespeare Mask for Caracu and the Jab Jab. And so we've been exchanging emails and we've been looking at that. And also, I, I, I was just saying to him that I am planning to, to go to Trinidad on the weekend because, you know, five or four. Artisa Domde in the Soka Monarch and, and um, Groovy Monarch semifinals. And it's this, what is taking place for us is, is amazing. And to know that this uh, documentary is what started it all. This uh, Jambalasi is what really started it all. I think it's really amazing. And you guys, we should really congratulate them for what they have done for Grenada. Thank you very much. I just want to say one more thing. Um, about two weeks ago, um, Mr. Kira came into my office about a little after seven o'clock in the morning, a little worried, you know, concerned that we might be losing the job, you know, people might be taking it over. And, and he was speaking about what we need to do in terms of the documentary. So um, Dexter and, and Ian, what you guys are doing is, is basically what everybody, everybody's concern. I think that is one of the things that is the takeaway, that everybody owns this. And I, I think I want to close and say that these few words probably would go a long way. Not just tonight was what, what was mentioned at the, on the documentary, but maybe 10 years from now that we all will say that I am Jambalasi. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Senator Nolan Cox, Minister Responsible for Culture and the Arts. It's now time for a special uh, Q&A session, and we have some uh, special uh, individuals we would like to invite to the podium, Mr. Leon Charles, Ricky Charles, Lennox Douglas, AKA Singing MC. I did not know that was your, um, the name on your birth paper. <laughs> so I learned something new tonight. Lennox Douglas, what a nice name. And the fine lady, ladies and gentlemen, the effervescent, talented, soulful Agnes Forrester.
So this is an opportunity. We welcome members of the media and uh, EU members of the general public uh, to ask uh, questions of the masters of sweet sounds. We know them as Moss International. Of course, Barney and Fred, they are here in spirit. So, who's stepping to the mic first? Media, we have media here. Media normally gets the ball rolling. No? I'll give you this one. I'll give you this one. This is GIS. Or maybe I should give you mine. Maybe I should start. Hey, right? that's okay. <laughs> Good. First of all, congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. Um, this is remarkable, really, really remarkable. And I know a lot of people looking on tonight for the first time. They have learned quite a bit. And so, just tell us. Um, just seeing yourselves on screen, your musical journey, the experiences. You know how, as you reflect. Uh, how do you feel? And I'll start with a lovely, dazzling, dazzling lady right here. Well, tonight bring back um, so much memories, and um, it's kind of emotional too for me, you know. Um, and um, Lennox. Thank you, Brenda. <laughs> this is 20 plenty years, I can't count it, that I've been in a setting like this. And um, <laughs> there's a feeling that seems to be boiling again. I am deliberately out of it because, you know, sometimes the old man doesn't really die. You know, but to come back here is a nice feeling, you know? Um, and to see, there's a, there's, there, there are things I saw on this. <laughs> I saw on the documentary that I don't know, I never knew I was capable of, you know? So at the same time, yes, um, to know your future, like we say, and sometimes you need to reflect on your past. Thank you, Ian, and, um, and Dexter. Um, uh, tonight is like a, an important milestone for, for me and I think for us. Because when, when, we, when we conceptualize and when we crystallize this, proje this project, it was all about trying to get the authentic Grenadian culture, the authentic Grenadian rhythm out there mainstream. You know, growing up in Grenville, late 1960s, early 1970s, Grenville was not known for pretty mass. It was jab jab. You know, that's what that's what you knew. That that's what carnival was in Grenville growing up. So so as a as a kid, you you look forward to the warm-ups to carnival because jab jab paraded the villages for many weeks before carnival, practicing the songs, practicing the rhythms, and at this time of the night, on an average weekday in Grenville, you know, late 60s, early 70s, you would hear the jab, -jab bands making their own. And then you, and on, and on carnival Monday, you look forward to the big jab, -jab bands. I, li I lived in Grenville, so I lived in Granbers at the time, so it was the bands coming down from St. James, from Tivoli, from, from Paraclet from La Filet, and you look forward to that. And then, they look, they, they, then the smaller bands that came along, the two, two or three man bands that came along to do the spelling was always very, very interesting. Of course, when those came, that's when your parents tried to tell you, go inside, little boy, that you're too rude, that you know, you're not supposed to hear what they're saying. So the, the opportunity to document that at the time was, was an important challenge for us. 
and is, and what is happening now with the, the rhythm being recognized with it being mainstream i think is exactly what the dream was when we did the song so i, I remember when when even when even as big as the song was going into carnival a lot of the pundits were so sure that after juve morning that would be the end of jamalasi that the song would it was, it was a nice juve song and then after jamalasi then people would go back to their regular carnival music but we were live on the road right we were live on the road we played in grenville we, we played in tongue uh, we, we we i think we did juve in tongue went back up to grenville finished juve came back to, to tongue to do the um the, the early monday evening went back to grenville to do the six and nighttime jam in grenville tuesday split ourselves the same way to try and accentuate that this rhythm really belongs to carnival it's not juve music right and so when the song even that year breaking the juve barrier was was an important milestone that a lot, a lot of the pundits at the time doubted would be achieved so to see the, the music being mainstream now and being the, 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 the focal musical rhythm of carnival in grenada and the region is is really a a, a, a wonderful feeling and I'm, I'm i'm um the minister spoke about about the fear of the um others trying to claim the rhythm i think that's something genuine and and i think documenting it in the way that has just been done thank congratulations ian and and dexter is an important step in giving the recognition to where it really belongs a lot of people have asked us over the years why haven't we copyrighted this it's not ours it belongs to Grenada. <laughs> this is not Mars rhythm. <laughs> it is Gulabe's rhythm. We took the initiative to get it into mainstream music. By the end of the day, this is the music and the rhythm of the people of Grenada. So it's not a case of Moss wanting to or being able to, um, to copyright it. It is Grenadian, and we have to somehow recognize it. I'm, I'm pretty interested to hear of the project which the minister speak, spoke of. But I think getting it into this sort of format and getting it into social media is an important step in getting that sort of indelible recognition that, listen, this is Grenadian. And it, it can only go for, further from here. Okay, I'd like to build on what, on what Ricky has just said. Um, first of all, at a personal level, it is extremely humbling to see something which you did for fun. Literally for fun. I mean, we were playing, we were trying to develop our own song and so on, but we did it because we enjoyed it. And it's humbling to see that that has now become an international musical form, which people are using as the basis for their music going forward. So it's a very humbling experience, and it really tells you how far you can get by simply doing things properly and doing it to a certain standard and a certain level of operation. And that brings me to the broader point I want, I want to get at. And I think the point Mr. Killer made to the minister is a very valid point. Um, as the music begins to spread, other people will begin to claim it. Um, we see it happening with Steel Band, for example, where you see Steel Band being played in some of the developed world, and the developed world's musicians are actually claiming it, and you're losing the Trinidadian roots. And therefore, we need to ensure that we keep our Grenadian ownership of the music. But I think that has to go beyond just documentaries like this, which of course hopefully should be disseminated through schools and wider audiences. I think really the challenge going forward is to our musicians and to our producers that they have to now develop the musical form. What we've done was a start, but we now need to be able to produce songs on the rhythm which in fact have stronger melodies, which have more variation, which should be more than just a drum and a chant, but which should really become an authentic musical genre. Um, we have seen some signs in the last couple of years. Last year, Talpri tried something called Jab Love, which is a very interesting dimension. Ricky mentioned um, Sandman, No Prisoners, an interesting one. Um, Tombstone this year went in that direction in terms of developing more melody than most of us, which can go abroad. I mean, it's, I feel good when I see t Tombstone in the, in, in the, in the Trinidad semi-finals as an authentic jab song. Um, I don't know how many of you have listened to Killer's song, 
but it's also an authentic jab song with some very interesting variations which you're using with the drums, which again is, is an interesting innovation. So, so as I reflect on this, I reflect on the fact that we need to encourage more and more creativity. And if there are any musicians and producers listening, my, my challenge to you would be to try to build on the music, try to give us something that goes beyond a chant and just a, just a drum beat, give us something that has instrumentation, that has arrangement, that has melodic lines, that has harmony, and so on, on the rhythm, so that the rhythm itself becomes a musical form that is not just something which would stay within Grenada and within our own narrow circle, but can really match on par as an international rhythm with things like reggae and reggaeton and the, and the rest of them. So it's a good feeling, but it's also a humbling feeling to see that this has gotten so far. Thanks. Good evening. It's good to see the family together. It makes me feel at home because I want everybody to know without Mass International, nobody would have known about Randy Isaac. <laughs> um, I want to thank Ian and Dexter for doing a wonderful job. This was like a history lesson for me, although I was around and I saw part of it. But the question is, now that the, the dream has become a reality, the thought ever crossed you guys' mind to come back and give us one for the road. <laughs> good one, good one. One for the road. I mean, it's always possible. I am still playing, Leon is still playing, and we, we, I, I still play live. I'm, and Randy is singing. <laughs> yeah, so the ingredients are there. There is not a project in, in progress at this time, but I would say don't rule it out because, I mean, the, you, you, at every carnival I do get the itch, I, trust me. <laughs> like Leon said, you know, um, Tombstone was, is, a, is a tune that really just wakes me up every time I hear it. Okay, it has really taken the melodic structure of the rhythm, captured the rhythm in its essence. It tells a wonderful story. And it has a beautiful melody, but it is so jab jab that it's just not funny. It just wakes you up. So when you hear that, you really do feel like like doing it again. So I just I would say don't run it out. Yeah. Um, as Ricky said, a couple of us are playing, and I could also tell you that Agnes actually has material which we have been listening to in the last couple of months. Um, so don't rule anything out. And in fact, you may also be interested in doing that just before he passed. Um, Don was actually thinking of a model which we could start, restart going live, but then he, he, fell, he fell sick. So there are ideas around. Um, Randy, we also have quite a bit of unreleased material. Um, we have an unreleased album actually, which we did in 99, and we never finished. Um, and right now we're also looking at, at it as part of that project with Ian and so on. So um, probably even before you see us live, you may hear something released sooner or later from the archives, which is still new because nobody has heard it before. So, so some things are possible. Randy, I'm your Calypso father. Keep yourself quiet. <laughs> um, my birthday was Sunday. <laughs> and the good thing is, NIS would be paying me to stay home. <laughs> so, these photos would go on, but I'm a Calypso retiree. <laughs> so, not. <laughs> As you mentioned, uh, Don, I'd just like to follow up with something. In 2017, um, he received the Prime Minister's Lifetime Achievement Award at the uh, National Cultural Awards. And part of his biography says. Don had a vision for the development of music in Grenada, and he sought to achieve it by striving to improve all facets of music in Grenada. He was not afraid to invest in the equipment that would produce the kind of product that he dreamed of both on stage and off stage. 
He was the first Grenadian to own a recording studio and a video studio, and he used this to develop the unique Moss International sound, as well as to record and produce music for other artists. Care to comment? I think Don's vision came from experiences he had traveling to New York um, as a, in his teens and early 20s. And he saw what was possible once you had control over your music. So in 1978, we did the first Moss album called Can It Be? I don't know how many of you have even know about that with songs like You're Gone from Agnes, which went to number four on the regional charts and so on. But the experience of that, that doing that record was that time was money. And we went to Trinidad to record it. And because you're working on a budget, you had to rush certain things. So some of the quality of the record was compromised because of the fact that we were working within a budget. And coming out of that experience, he decided that he wanted to have control over the music. And he understood what was required to record the music, a mixing board, outboard gear, and so on. And he was into the tech and that kind of stuff. So based on that is when he began to get the idea of doing his own studios. And once he did that, then the question of recording other Grenadian music was also part of that vision. Um, but then we got into the MTV age. And that meant that MTV age meant you needed to also have a visual. So we started doing the music videos also. So you heard in one of the biographies that were read, we have about 14 music videos. We used to record the band live, and then we'd review the performance the Monday after the, the weekend to see where there were things we could improve on and, and all that kind of stuff, because we had, we, we had that gear. So yes, he understood all the time what was required given where you were at a particular point in time. Um, you heard Dr. Friday mention on the video, um, no, not Dr. Friday, um, Junior Duncan, spoke about the keyboards. He was always on the cutting edge of the technology. He always felt that if you stay at the front end, then your, your quality would always be, be competitive. So he was also on the cutting edge of the technology. And therefore, he brought a lot of these new ideas into the band. He used to get his music, he subscribed to Musicians Magazine, a couple of the magazines dealing with gear and that kind of stuff. So he always knew what was happening, even as it was coming out. And therefore, he kept abreast of the technology. In fact, an anecdote to that is the challenge we're having right now. You heard me just talk about we're doing some work with it in terms of the other material. We have been trying to get the videos, for example, onto a modern format, which we could then release. The problem we have is that the videos were mixed down to a technology which has no, is no obsolete. So we have all the tips of those videos, but we cannot find a machine to play them on <laughs> because the technology, he was so ahead that the technology has leapfrogged. And it happened to us with the audio also. I don't know how many of you know about, about high aid technology. Um, we, have master, we used to master down to digital audio tape, the DAT. That was the transition between cassette and DVD and CD. But the DAT did not last very long. So once the CD took over from the DAT, they stopped making DAT machines. So we have the masters for all the songs on DAT, digital audio tape. But we cannot get anybody here or in the region who can transfer the data for us onto a computer so we can do the proper masters to release the song. That's why a lot of the songs have not been re-released because we have it, but it's difficult to transfer it. So that's the anecdote to being ahead of the technology. Sometimes when the technology moves and doesn't last too long, you get stuck in, in different phases. But yes, he had that vision, and he had the vision of Grenada music being something which is a lot bigger than just the carnival music. And therefore, he put all his energies into the creativity, the experimentation, the technology to support it, to have a quality that was competitive with what was happening in the rest of the region.
come over? Let me take the mic to you. So we have viewers on television and we have online um, people with us. Sorry, so let's think about them as well. First of all, let me congratulate the producers of this very important documentary. Um, I haven't spent a lot of time in the studios of Moss International when they start of the house before they move into the studio and um, familiar with Don being the genius that we all speak about. Minister mentioned what we are hoping to do in the future and as Grenadians I think we ought to pursue that vigorously simply because when we look at what has been happening in the world today and we refer to Pan, Trinidad claimed Pan for umpteen of years and only to find an American patent in the pan. So it no longer belongs legally to the people of Trinidad and Tobago that uh, pan started in Grenada. So we have to be very vigorous. We see what is happening in the industry, in the region, in how we are going to move forward in identifying and legally owning that music which you have given to us. You said it's Grenada, for Grenada. We have to move vigorously. But I don't believe it only takes the Cultural Foundation or the Minister of Culture. I think it takes Moss International, all of us, really pursue this in a vigorous way to ensure that at the end of the day, our music belongs to us and not a Trini or Bajan going in the United States and registering that rhythm whatever that is, and claiming it. Because if that happens, we are going to be left in the dark. So this is time, folks, for us to vigorously move in that direction to ensure that we own and we are truly Jambalassis. Thank you. Thank you so much. Anyone else? Questions? Comments? Uh, good, good, good night. Um, well, comments probably be for question or more comments or more than anything else. Um, I must say I'm truly proud to be here and I really want to congratulate uh, this production. To me, in my opinion, it's long overdue. And probably Sherman took some of the comments I wanted to make, but I think it's important that we as a people secure what's our identity. And I think this production tonight emphasizes the importance to do that, or the need to do that. And if you've been following, a lot of persons, because of the, your original production, has marketed Grenada now. And I would say Grenada, or all music has gone international solely because of your initial engagement or your initial production. And I'm saying this, and I feel very passionate about it because I have been involved, not both myself, I've been involved in a Jab Jab movement for 25 years. So you could consider myself a Jab Jab. And your influence, and I, you, you, when you were looking at, I came in late, but I looked at part of the video and you were making comments. I got goosebumps because I know that my uh, being a, as a kid getting into Jab Jab, that song is what we knew. And you made comments about having to practice early and before carnival and stuff and those days, so pants, I used to have so pants for me. And this brings back memories. And I um, need to reiterate that we need to document this and not just document, own it. So I really, really feel proud that we as a people are now starting to understand that we need to identify ourselves as Grenadians and not follow everything else in the world and say, okay, we just follow fashion. So I feel very, 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 very proud that we are people and I think we need to give ourselves a round of applause as our people 
And to this day, we see how our music has taken over. Question though, um, do you feel that uh, you have gotten the recognition that you deserve? And how do you feel as a group in terms of the way the music is today? How do you feel about your contribution to the art form? And do you think that you can continue or what advice you can have to our artists to produce similar kind of renditions and similar kind of music that will continue to take this island on the world stage? Thanks. All right, we got those questions. I have to be like Kirani here, not as quick. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, um, thanks very much for your comments. Um, in terms of the questions you've asked, recognition. Um, for us, when we produced material, the biggest recognition came from whether or not people enjoy the material. And the fact that in the year 1991, those of us who are wrong with recall that Jambalasi stayed popular on radio from carnival right through to Christmas. It was played in every party, every radio program, every day straight on. And then since then, it still plays in parties. It's a staple in parties. So from the point of view of the appreciation of the audience for the music, I would say yes, we really couldn't have asked for more. But it has gone even further than that because in recent years, I think, or Master Ceremony just mentioned the first culture, National Cultural Awards last year. It was recognized also. Don was recognized as the producer. So we got two awards in that, that one, also as um, for Jambalasi Rule. Um, in addition, about four or five years ago, there was an award ceremony in, for contribution to Rainbow City Festival. And Moss was also awarded for its contribution to Rainbow City Festival. So at the national level, I, I would say yes, we, the music has been recognized and the band has been recognized and we really want to thank everyone for having given that recognition to the work that, that, that we have been doing. In terms of where, where the music is today, I think you heard my comments a few minutes ago on this. Um, we think that more effort, and that goes not just to the jazz music, but generally, more effort could be made in developing the music of, of, of our carnival. Those of us who go back to the early 90s would recall that if you got to the Mashka, for example, you had a lot of different styles of music on stage. You had Inspector with one style, you had a Wizard with another style, you had Eggies with a different style, um, then you had the people from the Moss Camp, Calypso Cast with one style, you, you had a Jamo with one style, you had Mantis with a different style, but all of them were creative. They all were musical forms, they were arrangements, they were different efforts at the rhythm, you had um, Tangler and so on. Now when you go to say the March Girl, everybody sounds alike. I mean, quite frankly, it puts you to sleep most of the time. Um, and even when you go to Soka Monarch, it's like there's a template. You play a, tuk, 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 everybody runs up and down the stage for a few minutes, shouts into the mic, and they runs up and down the stage again. There's a lot more that needs to go into it. So quite frankly, I think as a musical form, our music has gone backwards in the last five to 10 years, and there needs to be an effort to become more creative, to become more musical, and so on. So in that sense, I think there, there is room for improvement. There have been a couple of bright spots, both Rick and I independently, for example, just referenced Tombstone last year, which was something very, very creative. A couple of years ago, the first year Mr. Kelly um, didn't make the finals. He had some very creative work, but then since then his work has become more mainstream and more traditional. So there is room for improvement, and it would be good to see the arrangers. I, think that, I really think that the responsibility is not to the Calypsonians, but to the arrangers. Because what, we, what we're talking about here is the music. The Calypsonians come with a voice and a chorus. They come with something they will sing along. But you as the arranger have to be able to hear it, hear where it could go musically, 
and have the musical expertise to know that if you extend, for example, the chord progression in this direction, it makes the song sound a lot bigger. And we're not hearing that from our arrangers and our producers and so on. So in terms of the music and where the music would go, I really think there's a challenge out there for our arrangers to really improve the quality of the music. We've had a couple of good songs last year. Um, Trouble in the Morning is a very well produced song, very well delivered song. Um, we had Tombstone and a couple of others. But there is room to move in that direction and improve the quality of what we're hearing. Um, and I think that could take us a lot further. And if we do that using the Jambalasti rhythm as the base, then the whole Grenadian concept of the music would improve. I just wanted to add one piece of recognition. Um, at the time Jambalasi was released and was popular, there was such a thing as Caribbean Music Awards, which was a regional music award that turned off the Grammys based out of New York. And in that year, Moss was nominated for the one of the top um, brass band, I think, in band of the year. And actually came in, what, what, we came second. So there was also regional recognition um, in the, the year that Jambalasi was popular. So it was not, Jambalasi was not only just popular in Grenada, but was popular in the diaspora, was popular in the region, and we in fact got nominated for a Caribbean Music Award that year and, came and placed second. I think there was a band from St. Kitts won, won that year. So in terms of recognition, yeah, I mean, that, there was recognition. <laughs> Just to add what, what these people were saying, if we could recall, I remember Don and I having a conversation, and Don saying this is 16 years after Jambalasi, and it seemed to have regressed, everybody just boop, boop, boop with the conch shell, and nobody trying to improve, which they should have done. Um, in terms of recognition, you all may not know that. But Jambalasi was the road match in Germany. <laughs> in 1991, I think. In 1991 or 92. The people did not know the English words. But you know, same damn thing. Same damn thing. So Jambalasi played in Germany, in the German carnival, and everybody singing, same damn thing. <laughs> All right, thank you so very much. Anything you want to say, Haggy? We know you're emotional, but anything in closing? A lot of people um, didn't know that Dawn was a, a guitarist. And Dawn was playing as good as George Benson. He was lying in a sick bed, and he said, as far as I go. I said, okay, then I will sing, and you play. And that guy, I said, well, why don't we just call Troy or Hamlet or somebody and let's record it? He said, nah, man, when I did, nobody in Gary remember, remember me, you know? But it was, you know, he was so good. He was just lying there sick and he was just playing as, I tell you, he was as good as George Benson. Thanks for that. Of course we remember him and he's here with us. Thanks everyone. Final question. <laughs> I just wanted to say congratulations. And uh, my question to you is, what role do you think merchandising your product will have in terms of preserving the genre, as we say, or the sub-genre? Um, and just on a, on a side note, while I'm on my feet, um, I was a member of the um, Ingredients Combo. And I remember in those days, that was between 1975 and 78, around there. Moss, Internet, Moss, what was Moss then, and the ingredients combo, we always met at the Bolio Calypso tent. I don't know if you, you could recall those days. And um, I remember one, one day, we were kind of early at the band practice. The, the, the band house used to be just before the collapsed church in Constantine just on the left hand side they had what they call the society hall and the band was i think there were other members of the band there of moss also there but um don was behind the keyboard and he was playing something and i i usually play keyboard for the ingredients at the time the ingredients combo and we had some down time nothing happening so i picked up the bass guitar and i started to play a bass line from a song 
by Billy Preston, that uh, famous black Beatles, Beatles that many people don't seem to know about. But the, the song was Bitter But Booty, or something like that. And the bass line went like, bum, 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 bum. And Don walked across from behind the keyboard, and he came up to me, looked at me, and he just had, stretched out his hand for the bass guitar, and then he just started, boom, 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 boom. I can never forget that, those days, yeah? But um, in terms of the, the merchandising, I would like you to shed some light on that for us, please. Thank you. Merchandising? Well, in terms of the merchandising, I think that's an excellent idea. Um, it obviously requires investment up front to make jerseys, hats, caps, stickers, and the rest of it. But I'll, I'll, I'll give you an idea. Um, I was reading once an article of why reggae has penetrated internationally and soca has not. And one of the points made was around the same thing, that reggae has that its own lifestyle. It has its look, its dress, its clothes, its locks, and everything else. All soca has for it, in some cases, is rum. Right? So the fact that the merchandising part of reggae gave it an identity, that you identify with reggae not just with the music, but with the look and the culture. If you look at rock music in the States, leather, leather jackets, leather hats, and so on, are associated with rock music, and rock people generally are fully dressed in leather. So yes, if you could come up with some kind of merchandising concept that goes with the jambalas, I don't know how you'll get the hunt and all the rest of it into it, but if you could do that, it certainly could help in terms of creating a lifestyle and an imagery around the music that will help to promote the music even further. So good idea, I hope Dexter and Ian are listening and you'll we'll think about it as the next phase of the project. Thank you very much. I think Dexter and Ian are well on their way as a concept behind your head. Instagram handles are free. Get down to roots. Hashtag Jamba. Jamba Lassi rule. Labe music. And you can probably put it in the, in the disc. So you're all on your way. Uh, we said one more, but this will be the last. Good night to everyone. Um, it's a pleasure being here. I just have one statement to make. Um, listening to the documentary as a jab player, I really enjoyed and was happy to know that Jab Jab, you know, was the reason for making a song. And everybody loved the song. So I just want you all to emphasize and let the Grenadian public to know how important Jab Jab is to our culture and our roots. Because there's a lot of people who have, you know, about it. But I just want you all to know, because everybody loved the music. So just let them know how important Jab Jab is. And from now on, we have to put a stamp on it and claim our own. I think that's the perfect closing comment. It is Jab Jab, and we are all Jab. We are Jab Nation, and we are, we are Jam Balasti. They don't like that. <laughs> yeah, final everybody. Good night, everybody. Um, we spoke all about, you know, Moss International, and of course, I want to pass on my, my piece to say congratulations to the band, to the family for bigging up Jab Jab and, and putting Grenada on the stage. But I think one thing that we always forget to mention is the origins of Jab Jab and what caused people to want to celebrate Jab Jab, you know, from the beginning. And as you mentioned a while ago about Jab Nation, a lot of people was, was having problems with that connotation, you know, associating Jab Jab Nation. But we have nothing to be ashamed of as a people. We were the ones who were subjected to the atrocities of slavery, and it was born, Jab Jab was born out of, uh, to find an avenue to express that part of our history. So as I was saying, we have nothing to be ashamed. Jab Jab is our culture. We must embrace it. We must embrace what is authentically ours and move forward uh, to the future with optimism, strength, and as we say, we are all Jambalasi. You know what I'm saying? So, it's great. 
Thank you very much. Um, even as they told the story in the documentary, you heard that there were members within the family, the band, that felt jab, jab, no way. <laughs> so it is a thread and it's a cultural thing. Um, but today, 45 years later, and maybe 200 years or so later, I am Jambalasi. Time we would like to present the um, flash drive of tree, and we're going to make four presentations. First, we invite uh, the Minister for Culture to the Honorable Norlan Cox to receive, and we invite Mr. Leon Charles to make the presentation. Uh, we have one for the Chief uh, Cultural Officer, Tommy Matthew. Um, I think Tommy may have left us. He's, oh, we invite Tommy. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Charles. We would like to invite uh, the daughter of Don, Dillion Forrester, to make the two presentation. Dillion. We invite the CEO of the Grenada Cultural Foundation, Ms. Sherma Wells. Dillion have it. You're most welcome. We now invite uh, the new CEO of the Spice Mask Corporation, Mr. Kelvin Jacob. We now like to invite Dr. Nicole Philip Dow of the UWI, University of the West Indies. And we would invite Agnes Forrester to make the presentation. Thank you very much. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your indulgence. And you at home and abroad looking on, uh, we thank you. Again, congratulations. This is just a really wonderful um, experience. And uh, all of you here this evening, I'm sure you know, you're know you feeling it. You're feeling the jumbie. You're feeling the vibe, right? <laughs> we now like to invite uh, as we have some live performances, live acoustic performance. But before we get to some renowned and well-known individuals, we would like to invite Mr. Lennox Douglas. He wants to say something. He can't figure out what he wants to do. If he ends up singing, that's all right. But he's coming to the stage, which is here, and I don't know what would happen. So let's welcome the singing MC. Thank you, Shoma. <laughs> Senility. See, I'm a retiree, so you know. Um, 
the family. They can always say Moss was never a band. Moss was a family. I remember going to Trinidad. We had Leon Charles, Ricky Charles. We had another Charles, Beats, Beats Charles. And they make my name Lennox Charles. <laughs> so you know, it was a family. Um, I try to keep away from these little gatherings, especially with these people, because it sometimes bring back uh, a thing it's hard to control. You know, you go in the studio, and um, it's just like, don't know. You heard a song playing back and I'll breeze. And there was a, a somebody that made the top chart. Um, the Latin crossover, too hot. I went in the studio um, about 12 o'clock after one a Sunday, a Sunday. Don, I you always there. And Don telling me, boy, you make real hot. I said, well, what hot? Just hot. So I said, too hot. Too hot became number one on the Caribbean chat. Crossover. Agnes and I sang it. And then I had a thing of Bacchanal Breeze. And I was thinking of doing Bacchanal Breeze. Royal titles behind me, everybody behind me, back and I'll breathe. And don't say, you thinking about a win. It's not back and I'll win, it's back and I'll breeze. A breeze is a gentle thing. And it, and then, yes, he did, yes, he did. Somewhere out there. So the cards, yes, he did. It's right there. Song key. But I said that to say, um, a long time people haven't seen me. Sometimes I get worked up a little bit. I'm not in this. But... I was told there's no MC, so I don't do my thing. No, I am a seven-day Adventist. Why I'm here is because I don't know. Mass International. When you're connected, you're connected. Get down to roots. <laughs> um, there was this couple who got married for a long time, but they're not meshing. You know, sometimes you're married and uh, can't be bothered with this woman, no? Can't be bothered with her. Make two children, you see them grow up, and like the woman children. Do you think? So this man went to church. He got converted and went to church. But he's still with the woman, he ain't giving up. And the pastor tell them, Sunday church. He say, man, the pastor impressed him. And the pastor said, just go home, man, even from here, and lift up. Not he tell that, and the pastor preach. And lift your worries unto the Lord. Don't keep, don't get old, nothing. The man went home, love up your wife, kiss up, and raise her in the air. Everybody passed, you know, what's going on with he? The woman feeling good, she ain't got that in years. He said, man, I enjoyed the service this morning. The pastor said, lift your worries to Jesus. I um, went to Olier's, Olier's service, and I wasn't as fat as this. I was a little small. I had a little stress. And somebody told us, my wife and I, no, listen, I'm a, married, I'm a bachelor by profession, but a married man by occupation, so you understand. <laughs> somebody told my wife, what happened to... What's going on? So you should drink Neutrophos. Neutrophos is be this and it could help you to eat and what and whatever. So I went and I bought a big bottle of Neutrophos. Read it. It says increase appetite, helps you to sleep, and takes away your stress. If you buy Neutrophos, you've seen that on it now, takes away your stress. Two teaspoonful and neutral first at the one in the morning, one in the evening. Helps you to eat. Boy, I start eating my plate of food and a little saucer. Increase appetite. I go into bed after seven. My wife and I will be lying down there and Lennox, Lennox, I sleep in the about two weeks afterwards, so that is, remember three things, eh? Increase your appetite, sleeps early, and get rid of stress. 
My bed is a small bed, three by six. My wife and I own that. So you know sometimes when married, people don't know that. You say, oh, go to your bed now, go to your bed. In the night you wake up and foot on you sometimes, hand on you, go to your bed. Well, I had that in the house too. So, increase appetite, sleep early, wake up one night, and I find no, something all right. So, uh, can I touch? No, I think so, not so. Can I fully awake? No, because I know what's going on. When I touch, I touch the end of the bed. Get rid of your stress. <laughs> no. <laughs> Just one final thing. Brenda, finish it. I was supposed to be the MC of this band. And um, these fellas could play. In fact, Leon and I, we wasn't in the same form, but we were in the same school. He was in form six, I was in form three, form four. And I used to always tell him, well, we live in close proximity. Moss could play, but the music need to reach out a little more. Which means the front end had a little problem. And he always cussing me. We always fighting in everything. The bass line, we fighting, but good fight. And one day, after this, the 86 thing, he came with a guitar. When Labe, um, Labe Carnival, he came to the studio with a guitar. Labe Carnival, hot. I said, boy, no, I am not. I just want to enhance the show. But I don't want to compete with nobody. We have steam, but we have this. No, 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 I can't compete. And he started playing a chord. So I had this song, I like the work as MC. And it went, MC, well, for your sake, MC boy. You impress me when you're small. You should never give up at all. Tell me why you let the culture fall. Come on. Man, it's high time you make a shout. No, so much a damn thing to sing about. But tell me why you close up your mouth. So much a topics now in the atmosphere. NNP, NDC. Venezuela, Brexit, even the teachers are fear. But sometimes when you hear you choose, well, I win, but sometimes people just lose. So it's hard to get a band to reach more standard or a man to put his foot in this MC shoes. I say, not me and that. A cyst in a calypsonian yes, to make a whole show on this current event and no fun. Mm -mm. What I want my fans them to realize, I don't with jokes, wriggles, or talk and lies. So sing calypso, not me. I don't want this work as MC. Get the official. Melang from Mary. I don't with these workers. I'm seeing. So you could touch your partner. Tell them individually. I don't with these workers. I'm seeing. I'm not like Randy, an inspector who in Calypso Cemetery. I don't with these workers. I'm seeing. No. <laughs> because I can say Christ died and he set me free. So I don't know with this work as MC. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Lennox Douglas, uh, the singing MC. Say he's done with the work as MC. So let's, kind of, let's give him a, a, an applause for all the time he MC'd. Ladies and gentlemen, you're here at Venus, the home of the Artist Lounge. Those of you who come by to do that. So, of course, there must be some live acoustic performance, right? Good. So, we'll invite to the stage at this time some folks to do that for us. Just as we get the, if someone can help us take away the tables and the chairs at the top, um, so we can get the musicians and the performance situated. The live performances will come from Carrie Malexis, 
uh, Sheldon Bob and Christopher Alexander. Please welcome them. The pride and joy of a nation is its flag. Its colors and arrangement makes it significant and stunningly beautiful. On Wednesday, February 6th, it's National Colors Day. Every proud Grenadian is asked to deck off in clothing highlighting the colors of our flag. Whether you are dressed for work, daily routines, or casual engagements, showcase the true Grenadian spirit. Every ministry, every department, and all workplaces are encouraged to join in. Well, I hardly remember his first name. I call him Shorty, so uh, all right, you realize why. All right, so I hope we do justice to this. Um, I learned some of the lyrics. I would read some of it, and we try and get it right. All right, so MC don't. <laughs> all right, you ready? Get down to root. Remember we tradition. You should be the best, right? But this is Mule. Shambhala see ruling this time. Where the brass? Yes, yes, you're it way. Taking it from the grapevine. We breaking our rules. We come with pick on and rhyme. If the campaign didn't pass in the yard, they would not say how we mud, but the kid don't pass in the yard. You say you'll make it better. You make we stain with finger. Now only one year later, this country having a failure. Hey, we vote, we don't vote, same damn thing. The heart and the hand, same damn thing. Same damn thing. Same damn thing. Keep it up. Keep it up. Keep it up. Keep it up. Now we can watch again. The brah, the brah, the brah, the brah <laughs> I call that George. You should do the brass. Let me hear the brass. We will want this thing. We think we must succeed. How can we grow without our basic needs? If we change our course, here could be paradise. Why strangle our hopes by trying to build a nice? If the tax man didn't pass me, yeah, they would not say how we want, but they pass me, yeah. We walk in for a little money. You take it back as you give way. You will prepare for CT. I know you kill me with the dead levy. Hey, we bet we don't vex him damn thing. We talk we don't talk same damn thing. Walk we don't walk same damn thing. We pay we don't pay same damn thing. Capital! 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 They, they grease your mumba! They grease your mumba! They grease your sister! They grease your brother! I kill them with certain taxes. Thank you, thank you. 
All right, that was that was what year? Ninety one. But remember the Jambalasi? That same rhythm came back in what year? In two thousand and four, with another world match. Let me go try it. Let me try it now, fella. There we go. What was the tune? Wait, wait. What was the tune? What the name of the song? Anybody know the name of the song? Ah, you the MC. <laughs> Let me try. You ever jump in this on a win? No, no. Get sick and say never me again. No, no. Not playing with drinking rum again. No, no. The last time I fall down, I walk a dream. You tell the people you stop, but can't fool me around. Whining like a crowbar, what to do in the jack? Have it in your face, I shot. You can see the bottle head gone. Could you never, ever, ever see it? Would you never, never, ever, never? You should never, ever, say never. You should never, ever, 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 say never. You should never, ever, ever see never. You should never, ever. He say he don't want she back again. No, cause she bring in donkey in he can. No, he say he don't take it. I say, brother, what do you do? Hey, God, don't you ever, ever, ever say never. You should never, never, ever say never. Don't you ever, ever, ever say never. You should never, ever, ever say never. You should never, ever, 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 never, never. Say never. You should never, never, ever say never. You should never, ever. Never say never. You should never, ever, 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 ever. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, Chambalasi rule. Thank you. Thank you. Never say never. Try to stop the record, right? Never say never. Never, ever, ever. <laughs> and uh, we Jambalasi rule. And there's a new generation. So, to introduce you, to tell you a bit about the Jamba Rhythm, the next generation of Charles Maestro, musical maestros. Please welcome Ian Charles. All right, so good night once again. All right, good night once again. If you look, um, at the graphic, you want to see 91, 04, and 19. So we're speaking it into existence, road match for this year. Um, the beat is coming back out again. And what we did, we put our youthful stamp on it. We sped up the rhythm, and we also increased. We put in a lot of horn sections in it. And we have the after dawn, after dawn, the next line of job and, and, and music came from Mr. Nodley Fedrick, from Old Woman Alone, Mario Castle Catholic, um, Criminal, Papa Jerry, Police, um, Man a whole Jab Jab, Rhythm Mix, Suck the Bottlehead, and he's the one that we're working with. So you know it's pure gold. And we have the likes of Lava Man and, I mean, uh, Skinny Bantan, the people that is trending today on the old school rhythm, Jab King, old mix with new. So I want you guys to really look out for that rhythm. Um, you see the handles there, get down to roots, hashtag Jamba. And we really want you to own it because like my uncle said, it's a Grenadian rhythm. You know, and this is going to be the third generation out. O4, PP did a good job. Dexter, Dexter and Emmanuel Duncan did a great job in Outbound Studios. And 1991, you know, Moss set the, um, set the standard. So we're really looking forward for 2019. We're still in the, we're still in the, in terms of when it's gonna be released, but pretty soon. So please look out for it, and once it comes out, please share and post. And let's have an next road match on our hands again. <laughs> right. 
Thank you, Ian. And again, congratulations to Dexter and yourself on the documentary. Well done. Hard work, all the people who were interviewed. Um, very, very, very well done. Well, folks, this is where we take the Jambalasi rule to another level, the refreshment level. But before we do so, we must say thank you, of course, to the Charles family for really allowing this to happen because, of course, without their time and their genius, their consent and all of that, this couldn't happen. So we, we must thank them and thank them again for the Jambalasi uh, rule. So let's hear it for them. It's a music of Labe. So Labe people asking, so what are they doing in Grand Ants? They're coming here. Yeah. <laughs> So this, uh, the documentary will be coming to Grenville soon. Yes, lovely people. Thanks for Moss. Thanks for the music. Thanks for the memories. Thanks for Rainbow City. Thanks for all of it. They are coming your way and they're going to be doing this in conjunction with Sedu. So please stay tuned for that. Thanks everyone who came out. Minister Nolan Cox, we thank you very, very much. All the special invited guests, family, friends, lovers of the art form. We thank you. Venus, thank you for being great host, a great home uh, to have this. Uh, Dexter Mitchell, uh, Made in Grenada, and Ian, thanks so much for this. We really appreciate it. And let's uh, have a good time. Uh, we invite you to refreshments. And remember, great is the art form. Great is Grenada. Great is Moss International. And we are Jambalasi. I'm Brenda Batiste. Thanks, everyone. Good night. This live stream was powered by PartyGrenada.com. The pride and joy of a nation is its flag. Its colors and arrangement makes it significant and stunningly beautiful. On Wednesday, February 6th, it's National Colors Day. Every proud Grenadian is asked to deck off in clothing highlighting the colors of our flag. Whether you are dressed for work, daily routines, or casual engagements, showcase the true Grenadian spirit. Every ministry, every department, and all workplaces are encouraged to join in. National Colors Day, Wednesday, February 6, 2019. Endorsed by the National Celebrations Committee. Our people, our colors, our day. On Wednesday, February 6, National Colors Day. Midnight, it's February 7th. It's our nation's birthday. It's time for the biggest celebration in our nation's history as we celebrate the 45th anniversary of our independence. Folks from all walks of life, from all over Grenada, will head on down to the King Rennie James Athletic Stadium from 12 p.m. It's the Made in Grenada Expo, a showcase of locally produced goods and services offered on display. As you enter the Independence Village, experience steel band music, big drop dancers from Kariku, Tambu Bambu, Shortney, Jab Malasi, Poetry, Singing, Live Music, Solid the Band, Everything Grenadian. At 3.30 p.m., Military Parade, on to the King Rennie James Athletic Stadium, followed by the Independence Rally, Cultural Pieces, Prime Minister's Address, One Fun Filled Afternoon, Not to be missed. Organize your rides, your buses, your motorcade. And head on down to the King Rennie James Athletic Stadium. Thursday, February 7th. Celebrating under the theme. Building resilience and enhancing social and economic transformation. This live stream was powered by PartyGrenada.com.